back for this evening from Hamilton, Ontario, Mace Scaloni. This is great. Uh, my name is Mace. I'm, uh, I am from Hamilton. Um, all right. I don't know if it deserves that. But I most of the shows I'm used to doing are in Hamilton in like dingy bars. Like uh, I did a show recently, and uh, a guy came up to me in the bathroom afterwards and asked if I wanted to buy some cocaine. Yeah, that's, Which, a that's a that's a weird choice for him. He was looking at the same thing you guys are looking at. <laughs> This is, this is not a new look for me. I wasn't wearing like a velvet tracksuit with a gold chain and a mustache. I look like the last drug I took was a Tylenol menstrual by accident. But he came up to me in the bathroom after the show and he goes, Psst, hey man, wanna buy some coke? And my answer, word for word, I promise you, was no thank you, but I appreciate the offer. I don't know why I got concerned about the drug dealer's self-esteem. <laughs> like, listen, man, I'm not into it, but it doesn't mean I don't appreciate what you're doing for the community. <laughs> Hamilton needs this right now. <laughs> I hope I'm never mugged. Just, like, of course you can have my wallet. I'm sorry you had to ask. <laughs> Do you need a ride home? You know what? Take my car keys. I don't want to be a bother. Do you need some coke? I just met a guy. <laughs> I say dumb things all the time, especially in small talk. I suck at that. Like, I had to meet my girlfriend's boss, and right after we met, he goes, hey, you look Jewish, are you Jewish? And I was like, oh no, I'm not Jewish, I'm Italian, but there has been a rumor in my family that my grandmother cheated on my grandpa with a Jewish guy, so there is a chance I might be a little bit Jewish. <laughs> and he goes, wow, okay. <laughs> and immediately I could tell that was not a good wow. <laughs> I was not dazzling the man. That is just a dumb way to answer the question. Like, hey, are you Jewish? No, but my grandma's a whore. <laughs> my, uh, I, have, I am in a relationship. I've been for two years, first time in my life. And I found out some stuff about myself. I found out I could be jealous, not proud of that. Uh, usually what would happen is she'd come with me to a show and she'd like go to the bar to get a drink and then some like tough alpha male guy would hit on her and I'd be pissed. I, I wouldn't try to like fight him or anything. I don't want to be that kind of boyfriend. The dead kind. Uh, I would just get angry, which doesn't even make sense. She chose me. That means I'm her type. I shouldn't worry about her meeting a tough guy at a bar. I shouldn't worry about her meeting a lesbian at a comic con. <laughs> That's the competition. Someone with more Yu-Gi-Oh cards who knows how to touch a woman. I know it's not good. I know you shouldn't be jealous. Like, my friend tried to give me advice. He's like, dude, you can't be like that. Love is like a flower. You gotta give it space, give it everything it needs to grow, and that flower will bloom. But if you rip it out of the ground and hold on to it all the time, that flower will be ruined. Which is good advice, but you know what else might ruin a flower? If that flower has too much tequila and fucks a guy at the bar. <laughs> That'll destroy a flower. There will be petals everywhere. <laughs> My girlfriend does uh, like to drink, and uh, here's the thing, I don't drink. I've never been drunk, and uh, that can be a weird... Uh, they, like, when she gets drunk, to me, it's just confusing. She just slowly turns into a different person. It's like I get a mistress all of a sudden with a learning disability and seasickness. <laughs> who hates me. And thinks she can sing along to Informer by Snow. <laughs> we fight a lot when she gets drunk, and it's mostly my fault. I haven't learned how to properly argue with a drunk. Like, I keep pointing out that she's drunk, as if that has ever worked. Like, what do I think, I'm gonna talk her out of it? Like, Cassie, you're only mad because you're drunk. Oh, I never thought of it that way. Thanks for pointing that out. I'm sorry for making a scene in this 24-hour grocery store. That's not what happens, it's more like, Cassie, you're drunk. Fuck you, you're drunk. I'll lick you, boom, boom, down. It can be 
really weird telling people I don't drink sometimes. Like some people have a weird reaction to that. Like a, a lot of guys will get mad and be like, oh, I, I don't trust the man who doesn't drink. Like, of course, you wouldn't want me to drive well or enunciate around you by accident. <laughs> it seems like society as a whole doesn't really approve of not drinking. Like, just on the language that we use. Like, I was at a restaurant, they had this milkshake thing, and I ordered it, and I asked if I could get it without alcohol. And the girl goes, oh, virgin. <laughs> All right, I'm still a paying customer. <laughs> Don't have to throw that in my face. But that's what we decided, that's what that's called. It's like, oh, you don't like alcohol, good luck getting laid, pussy. <laughs> it's the only thing you can order that comes with an insult. Like, if you order a Caesar salad and ask for it without bacon, they don't go, oh, Jew. <laughs> get the pride that some people have for things they did when they were drunk that they would never otherwise be proud of. Like you hear people say things like, oh man, one time I got so drunk I took a shit in a McDonald's urinal. <laughs> that is not an accomplishment. That is a severe behavioral problem. Your fun night ruined a Latino woman's day. drink. I, I eat a lot of fast food, that's my vice, which is such a lame vice. At least alcohol is fun. Like, you go into a bar at 1am, it feels like a party. You go into a McDonald's at 1am, it feels like an emergency room. <laughs> something's beeping, somebody's sleeping, somebody's bleeding, somebody's dead. <laughs> I also don't do any drugs, but I found out recently that my parents smoke weed. But, it, and that's weird. That, that, that means all those times we watched Disney's Fantasia, they were having a way better time than I was. <laughs> the first time I smelled weed, I was like, huh, this smells like that Sharon, Lois, and Bram concert my parents took me to. <laughs> my parents are really cool, which sucks. Like, if you're a parent in this room, you should let your kid be cooler than you. My dad was way too badass. My dad lost his virginity when he was 13. Yeah. Nope. Uh, here's the thing, he told me that when I was 13. <laughs> that's not parenting, that's a taunt. <laughs> just like, hey son, what you doing? Oh, just watching TV. By this time in the afternoon, I'd be slamming puss at your age. <laughs> no, no, keep watching Justice League. Don't get off the couch and make me proud. <laughs> When I was a kid, uh, my dad signed me up for hockey. I played hockey, I ended up playing for six years, and uh, according to my trophies, I was a very good participant. <laughs> I hated getting participation trophies, because they always came with an engraved picture of a guy playing hockey way better than I can. Like, executing a perfect slap shot. Even as a kid, I was like, I've never looked like this. I think I got the wrong one. Do you have one where he's bow-legged or on his ass? <laughs> Maybe just one that shows his dad in the stands texting. <laughs> My dad didn't care about sports, which is better than the dad that takes it way too seriously and just like screams things at his kid on the ice. Like, hurry up, Cody! Defense! I'm stuck in a loveless marriage! Things like that. <laughs> I also don't get this with hockey. I don't get hockey fighting. That's not a part of the game. Like, I know we're all used to it, but it's, like, if you were teaching somebody hockey, at no point would you be like, all right, put the puck in the net, and then if you feel like it, punch that guy in the face. <laughs> That'd be like watching golf and Tiger Woods just starts jerking off on the green. <laughs> and all the fans are like, hey, give him a minute, he's blowing off some steam. <laughs> is to play hockey, it's already how hard can it be, and then, and then they can punch people while they're working, and they're making nine million dollars a year. Maybe if you're making minimum wage, you could do that. You know, like if you're a waitress, and you're serving some guy, and he's complaining over the quality of the food that you clearly didn't make, she should be able to lay a few haymakers on the clock. Like, 
some guy leaves her a 65 cent tip, she should just be able to punch him as many times as she can until the manager blows a whistle. <laughs> and then she gets a five minute break. <laughs> but some people love it. I have a friend, he's like, I only watch hockey for the fighting. That seems like a, a waste. Are you unaware of like UFC or world star hip hop? Like you could. <laughs> Watching hockey for the fighting is like watching Schindler's List for the nudity. <laughs> oh, Don't worry, I can say that. I look Jewish. <laughs> I, uh, I have been in one fight in my life. Um, it was when I was in grade six. It was with my best friend. Because he called me gay, and so then I called him gay, and so then we fought about it. <laughs> the problem with that is that we were both wearing chunky snowsuits, so our fight was just us hugging, rolling around in the snow. <laughs> Which, if you saw from a distance, you would have been like, that young gay couple needs to relax. <laughs> uh, that guy, his name was Andrew, he's my best friend, and his parents were super religious. And I remember they didn't let him play any video games that had violence in them. They didn't want him to be exposed to that. But they would make him read the Bible <laughs> as if nobody gets killed in that. The Bible is basically Grand Theft Auto Bethlehem. <laughs> it's filled with murderers and prostitutes. If you made a video game out of the Bible, it'd be the most violent one. Like, what do you gotta do on this level? I gotta circumcise the neighborhood. <laughs> I wish I didn't get this on Wii. <laughs> it seems like a lot of people now aren't really, a lot of people don't define themselves as religious, they call themselves spiritual. Which the difference, as far as I can tell, is basically saying, I'm not going to believe in something somebody else just made up. I'm going to believe in something I just made up. <laughs> Because that's what, they just kind of come up with whatever they want on the spot. Like I have a friend, he's like, God is love. That's all you need to know. God is love. That's just three words put together. That's like Santa Claus is lust, or uh, the ghost of Rosa Parks is swag. <laughs> this, is, this is what my mom says. She goes, oh, I don't think God is a man in the sky. I think God is an energy in the universe that gives us strength. An energy... That's not God, that's the Force. <laughs> Don't take me to church, put on Star Wars. <laughs> and I lived in Toronto for a while. I had a roommate who was really religious, and uh, we used to debate religion all the time, which is dumb. It, it's not like we're solving anything, we're just ruining our game of Catan. And uh, <laughs> he would say this, he'd go, well, you can't prove God doesn't exist. Which is true, because that's not how logic works. I can't use that on him throughout the day in the apartment. Like, you know what, dude? You can't prove Jesus didn't eat your pizza pockets. <laughs> He's like, you're eating them right now in front of me. I can see you doing it. I'm like, you gotta look with your heart, not your eyes. <laughs> God is love. <laughs> The weirdest one I ever heard was this. Uh, there was this girl I went to high school with, was super religious, and uh, she was also kind of a jerk about it, like homophobic and stuff, and I asked her one time why she believed in God, and she said, I swear to God, uh, she goes, I believe in God, because I was sick in the hospital, and then I prayed to God, and then I got better. <laughs> wow, how could that have possibly happened in the hospital? <laughs> when you were surrounded by nothing but doctors and medicine, did you also pray for a pudding cup, or did God toss that in on his own? <laughs> it's the hospital, that's what's supposed to happen. That's like going to the strip club and praying to see boobs. <laughs> You're gonna see them. It's not because God, our father, pulled through. It's because Jim, her father, didn't. <laughs>
Galoni. Mace, M-A-Y-C-E, Galoni. Samboni, but not that. 